I haven't opened my post from China for quite some time. I think we're gonna need to split this into two. First up is a pretty big one, uh, LED photo lamp strip SMD full spectrum grow lights 12 volt, yeah, value of two dollars, it was definitely a little bit more expensive than that. I'm obvi obviously out of practice opening mailbags because that took way longer than it should have. Um, yeah, so these are um, these are LED grow lights. Um, so they've got red green lights. I'll put a picture of them in action somewhere here. Um, so this is a waterproof strip and this is a regular one. So what I want to do is make a DIY grow light out of them. Sorry about that, I had to update my webcam drivers so I didn't look uh, pink. Um, yeah, okay, so I was going to make a DIY grow light and I'm going to do that in a future project just for going over some uh, vegetables in the kitchen or whatever. Um, yeah, so these are pretty cheap. Um, I'll display the information up here. Um, but yeah, so I've got one without any waterproofing and one with. Um, yeah, I think I have another set of these coming as well, and I'll explain the difference in that one. More of the same LED photo lamp, blah, 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 blah. So these ones are 3 is to 1, um, so they're the same as the other ones that we were shown, except, so it's also not waterproof, um, the other ones are labeled, so the other ones are 5 is to 1. So what that means is that for every LED, it, let me zoom you up a little bit, it's red, 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 blue on this one. So there's three red ones for every one blue one. And on the other ones, there's five red ones for every one blue one. Um, so the different wavelengths of light are for different stages of flower growth. I'm not 100% sure on it, but I think more red is better for flowers while more blue is better for vegetation or vegetables. I don't know anything about this, but I said I'd try out the two different ones, or get the two different ones so I could figure it out more later. So yep, yeah, that's the story with those. Next up we have plastic sheet, also with a value of two dollars. Okay, so this is a SMD test board just for testing out soldering of SMD components. I ordered this absolutely ages ago and it I don't know exactly when this one arrived. I didn't actually write a date on it. I'm, I'm going to assume sometime in April. But uh, yeah. So I bought this around the same time I bought my solder oven. Just But it's only arrived now. So yeah. Hopefully I'll get to give that a go since I still haven't actually used it yet. So cool okay so next up we've got bluetooth timer with a value of 80 cent okay so interesting um let me show you something this is from my local two euro shop and yes it's three euro and this is from aliexpress do they look similar they sure do. Um, in fairness, that's not too bad of a price. Like this is just about a dollar from AliExpress. So yeah, I guess you know 
picking it up locally and not having to wait for delivery or whatever could be worth it. But um, this is actually pretty good. It's a Bluetooth um, trigger for a camera uh, or your sorry phone um, that's powered off a coin cell. And uh, I've actually tested this one out, even though it doesn't look open um, already. And uh, yeah, it works, works well. Um, the Both camera buttons work for Android, so I'm not 100% sure why there's two of them. Um, I think it just sends a volume up command on a HID. Um, yeah, so... Uh, when I actually saw these, I was a little bit disheartened because I actually made something like this before. It's out of battery now, but uh, Bluetooth remote camera trigger, Bluetooth remote camera trigger. Um, there is uh, the box probably cost more than uh, this did, so. Yeah, if you want a Bluetooth remote camera trigger, just uh, go for this one. This one I only wrote 26th on. Um, I think it was of April. I probably didn't plan for it to span multiple 26th that it could have been. The other thing about it is that my dog already tried to help me open it, so I don't even need the knife for this one. So it's too... Oh, she obviously got a bit of a toot into that one too. Um, maybe it's just one uh, Wi-Fi USB adapter for a Raspberry Pi. These are really cheap. So I had a couple of Pis that didn't have Wi-Fi in them. So uh, Pi Zeros and older Pis like that. Um, so I thought I'd pick up a couple of these so if I needed to use Wi-Fi, which I probably do in nearly every project I'm going to do with it. So this should bend out pretty easily anyways, so it should be good too. Okay, this one is water lamp kit. Uh, so it is another SMD practice board. Um, funny one about this one is, so this arrived on the 18th of April. Um, I'm pretty sure I bought it in February, I'll put it up um, now, but uh, one of the viewers from the channel, Michael, bought it at the same time in Germany, and he got his like two or three weeks later, and mine took however long February to April took, so uh, yeah. <laughs> Again, this was bought for practicing with the reflow oven, so yeah. Glad to finally get to try it out. Should be fun. Next up we have one marked as syringe. Yeah, so these are just uh, regular syringes. Um, I think somebody actually in a live stream, I want to say maybe Greg recommended getting these. Uh, I ended up buying them from eBay, which normally I'd buy everything from AliExpress, but I think they're linked to particular ones on eBay. So it's just to use with Flux or different uh, different things like that. And even if I don't end up using the syringe, this uh, pokey part, I'm not even sure what they're called, plunger, be pretty useful for uh, trying to push through, um, push through Flux uh, in the larger Flux dispensers, um, although it doesn't seem like I can get it out too easy. But anyways, that was pretty cheap, so hopefully it'll be useful. Okay, this one is baking mold, and has a value of one dollar, and I definitely need to scribble this out. I'll make it easier for myself and only show this side when I'm cutting it open, save me some editing. Yeah, so it's a barbecue temperature probe. Um, I've talked about it on the channel a few times before, I think, about wanting to make a barbecue monitor. 
So you can buy these probes on Amazon as well, um, but they're a little bit more expensive. So I said I'd try out the one from AliExpress just to see what it was like. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. Next up is Jack. So these are DC barrel jacks, but they have pins on the bottom that are suitable for breadboards. I'm not too worried if they're suitable for breadboards or not. What I wanted to use them with is perf board. So let's check how they work with that. So this is what a standard one of these barrel jacks looks like. Uh, the legs are too fat to fit into holes and these ones just are a little bit smaller so we'll fit into perf board okay and not looking too great the legs are small enough to fit in but they don't seem to line up too well With a bit of persuasion you can get it to go in. That's with me nearly needing to bend the legs in inwards. It's not too bad. Let me try one bending it outwards. It took way longer than it should have. So that's what it looks like if you just try to push it straight in so you can see it's almost going in between two holes almost perfectly yeah it's probably a better fit if you stretch out the back port to go into the hole so now there's two holes between the front and the back pin while on this one there's only one that seems to be a more comfortable fit because you can push it all the way down to the bottom hmm. yeah hopefully they'll be useful anyways but uh... yeah you'll have the same problems with a uh, bread board they're pretty difficult to get back out to Actually, it fits in a little bit better into a breadboard. It's it's after bending back inwards. Now, whether that's making good connections or not, I don't know. But mm, no, you can't do that because I'd have to go this way, right? Yeah, I'd say that's probably okay. But you don't have a lot of room here to uh, to put it in unless you put this no all you can do is put it in like that and it just gives you those last ones there so yeah it could be useful it wasn't exactly too expensive anyways so we'll see how we get on with them and this one is labeled 1584p5 by 1 at a value of 76 cent Um, yeah, I think these are just small DC to DC converters. Um, you can configure it using this little pot here. Um, but yeah, there was a couple of projects where I wanted to use DC to DC converters, and the standard size one is just a little bit too big. It's maybe twice the length of this, so this should be better for like fitting into small project boxes or whatever. So I got five of them in a kit um, yeah next up we have connectors and it was two dollars so these are buttons uh, right angled ones 
and yeah so I'm hoping to use them in an upcoming project nothing really to say about them look good okay next up is integrated circuits oh, I just noticed as well the value is 15 cent it's probably actually not too far from the truth So it's just a small uh, WS2812B or NeoPixel strip. So it's got what? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8. I can't count. It's got 8. I'm going to leave that in just to show how stupid I am. It's pretty early on Monday morning, in case you're wondering. So yeah, it could be good as a status indicator for something. You know, uh, you know is something loaded or... Is it too hot or too cold or whatever? It's pretty cheap as well, so I just thought I'd pick one up. Why not? Okay, so next up we got cell phone accessory, $3.26. It's not from Wish. I've never bought from Wish. And man, I really hate their ads on YouTube. They must have got the most annoying people in the world to make them. I have it, I have it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Yes, 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 yes. Look, mermaid blanket. Yeah, what is that? But anyways. So it's more stuff for uh, Raspberry Pi projects basically, so again, Pi Zeros. I have a few Pi Zeros that I want to try and make as usable as possible because they're currently doing nothing. Um, so it's a micro USB hub, so we got micro USB one side and we've got two regular USBs on the other and then another micro USB, I think you can use this to power um, the hub or you know if you've got uh, an external hard drive that's plugging into this that needs a little bit more power you can power 5 volts through here as well so yeah uh, really useful pretty cheap yeah why not I'm gonna leave it there for part one we'll finish the rest of the packages in the next video in the meantime since you're still here you're obviously a big fan of post bags so I wanted to recommend a few channels that do excellent post bags on the left we should have Stephen Ludgate's channel, in the center Unexpected Makers, and on the right Pile of Stuff. That's it for me, and I'll see you back here for part 2.